Okay, there we are. See, now we're live. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, friends. Hi, everyone. So Julie and I are back, and we brought friends. So Julie, I'm going to let you do the introductions of our friend Tony, and we're going to like talk about some amazing stuff today. Yeah, so welcome, everyone. We're really glad you're joining us live today because we are talking about something that we think is incredibly important, and it's how do we make schools inclusive for all students? As you know, that's what Christy and I spend our lives doing, and we're, that includes trans students. And so today we're gonna to be spending some time thinking about genders, and how are we really thinking about students who consider themselves to be non-binary, and how do we really pave the road so that uh, everything's accessible for everyone? And we have Tony Ferriello here with us, and we're so, so glad to have you, Tony. Um, glad to be here. Yeah. So Tori, you share, share with us, let's just start with like um, your background, who you are, if you don't mind. Sure. sure. So um, in 2005, I transitioned. Uh, back then, there I didn't know any trans people. Um, but the only thing I knew that if I didn't transition, I wasn't going to live the next day. I got mm -hmm. to um, really, really dark places. But something really cool happened when I started my social transition and people started referring to me as he and him. I found myself standing up a little bit taller. And then when I started, then when I started my medical transition, I had my chest surgery. I I can't explain. It was a life changing moment for me. The first time I looked into a mirror and my mind and my body matched, mm. shifted me forever. Um, I I felt that there was a need to reach out to the the youth of this community because if I didn't know any trans people, yeah. they didn't know any trans people. But I knew there had to be um, uh, trans kids and, and non-binary kids in the area. So I started a support group in 2008. Uh, two kids came to the first group. Nobody came to the second, third, or fourth group. One kid came to the fifth group. I took them out for coffee. Um, we are still running that group. And last meeting on Zoom, we had 25 kids. Um, that one teen group turned into uh, a parent group also meets, and then a young uh, group, art group, Create Yourself, um, meets, and that's for kids that are 12 and under. And we just play with Play-Doh and create glittery things, and they talk about gender if they want to, and if they don't, that's cool. But they're able to come into an environment where everybody's going to honor who they are honor their pronouns, honor their name. And it's not their preferred name. I want to, I want to clarify something. Mm -hmm. Everybody always says preferred, preferred. No, it's their chosen name. It's their name, you know? So that's really important to know. So after that, I became a certified life coach and I, uh, my coaching, of course, my clients are trans and non-binary families. I typically try to um, coach the whole family. And then re just recently last year, I got my teaching certification in mindfulness communication and mindfulness, uh, everything. And I incorporate that in a lot of my trainings because you need to be present. You can't be kind unless you're present. <laughs> so that's a little bit about me. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love your so many things I want to go into, but yeah. yeah. Okay, keep yeah. Going. No, all I want to tell is, so I'm just noticing Micah is there. Hi, Micah. Nice to see you. And anyone else who's there, just join us on the chat and say hi. Um, so Tony and I met at the very beginning of the pandemic. We were both keynote speakers in two different rooms and I was so excited to meet him and I was like, can I have lunch with you, et cetera. I just needed to know what you're doing because in school systems all the time, people are saying to me, hey, can you help me support this student who's transitioning? Can you help me think about how to train this group of teachers? And um, I can and I do, but better yet, really talking to someone who has transitioned themselves and who knows deeply all the aspects of what that looks like and means. Can you back up for us, for those people who are brand new to this conversation, you put your pronouns up first. Let's just start yes. with why. Is that okay to start there? Yeah, sure. So it's really, really important that we honor each other's pronouns because just by looking at me, you don't know my pronoun. Mm -hmm. You can't assume somebody's pronoun. And if you're using the wrong pronoun with a student, especially young, young kids, any student, you're not affirming who they are. And they don't see, they don't feel like they're seen. And if there's a reason why, say, um, listen, here, here's statistically, statistically, there's going to be a few people in a school district that don't like trans people and they don't feel that we exist and we're mentally ill or whatever. I get that. But if you can't separate your personal values from your professional values, then you might want to check in with yourself and maybe go down a different career path, right? Because what, what your role in a child's life is, is to help them become the most educated and productive human that they possibly can be. 
and a, a student can't be what they can't see. And if they can't see themselves in literature, um, uh, posters on the wall, if they can't see a trans girl or a trans boy or a non-binary kid, and believe me, there's posters, all right? You don't have to draw them out yourself. If they, they won't feel included, and then you're gonna lose them, right? You know, 51% of trans youth att attempt suicide. And, and it's not just the teenagers. We're talking about, you know, little young humans that are, you know, eight, nine years old who are thinking they don't want to live anymore. Come on, we have to help them. <laughs> right. And even younger, three, four, we've got to be thinking about how are we inclusive in every oh, yeah. aspect of education from, from crib, crib to grave. We've got to really rethink what it looks like to be welcoming and inclusive. And it starts, it doesn't start with pronouns. Um, it starts with a lot of different things. So we're yeah. kind of, we're today putting kind of a potpourri of ideas for you and educators, people are already commenting. Jamie said she had a student last year um, who had a student who identified as a, as a boy. And so um, that was a big learning for her. That's what happens. And the student was four years old. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so what do we do? What, what do we do? We say, okay. <laughs> And, yeah. we, and we educate them and we respect them and we honor them because our job and our roles as educators and adults is to pave that path of success and happiness and minimize those damaging emotional roadblocks that these children will have. I, I just got through talking a couple months ago to a first grade teacher who had a kid, a trans girl. So Jack was in the school last year, Jackie came in this year. If you did all your work, you got a toy. This teacher had gender, a, a box for girls and a box for boys. Mm. She insisted that Jackie pulled out of the boy box. So I said, why don't you just have one box, throw all the toys in there and let the kids pick out what they want. Mm. You have to be mindful of what you're gendering in your classroom. Boys and girls, no more. Hi everyone, good morning class. You know, you, we have to be careful because when you have a non-binary uh, person in your class, they're not included in that. You know, so so, Tony, if you don't mind, do a couple more of those, because I do know for many of us in early childhood, um, those implicit biases are some of those things that are just so who we do. Like, for example, we're all at circle time and we're going to go line up. So if you're a boy, go line up. If you're a girl, go line up. So maybe yeah. just a couple more examples for us to go, wow, I was using genders or I was assuming things that could be laying the foundation for yeah. that self-aggression. And yeah. Anybody who's wearing sneakers, line up first. Anybody who's not, line up second. Yeah. I mean, be creative, right? Yeah. But we do, we gender a lot of stuff. And, and during the training that I'm gonna be doing, we're gonna be talking about bathrooms and yeah. locker rooms. You know, they, they, listen, every kid has a right to pee. And I'm going to tell you, the kids that I work with who don't, don't eat or drink anything all day. And you know, that's very okay. harmful to them yeah. or they'll hold it in and then they get bladder infections and stuff. Yeah. It's a bathroom and, you know, best practice because in New Hampshire, it's not law in Connecticut. It is, but best practice is to allow the child to use the bathroom according to their gender identity. And if another student has issue with that, you find another bathroom for that other student to use. That's best, best. I call it best practice because I can't say it's the law. <laughs> best practice. And really, that's what we're talking a lot about, too, is inclusive practices. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping people are listening and I'm just recapping for people who are joining us. We've talked a little bit about pronoun use. We talked a little bit about how we're, we gender everything as educators. So mm -hmm. girls line up here, boys line up here. What you're not understanding is if you're someone who doesn't identify in either way, you're causing a lot of internal uh, struggle at that moment that also leads to a person who is not available for learning, who doesn't feel yeah. like they belong, who doesn't feel like they're connected to that larger class or the larger society. So it's a, it actually is, you know, sometimes people call it micro microaggression, just to gender a box like you're talking about, Tony, yeah. or, or um, a line is pretty, it's a, it's an aggressive act against kids who don't identify one way or the other. And it's not even who don't, and, and I'm going to add to that. It's, it's the trans boy, like, okay, me, I was born with the assumed, uh, the, the assigned sex of female, but my gender identity is male. So if you have a little young uh, person in your class that really was born with the assigned birth sex of female, but feels male, they're going to feel uncomfortable in the girl's line too. Yes. And they might not even know why yet. 
Yeah. But there's a feeling inside. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, we're just, like there's a pause. We'll talk about pause in a minute in a good yeah. way. But in this sense, it's sort of like a little bit confusing. But when you're so young and you're just creating that idea of identity, yeah. it's one. It's just another example of us policing or telling kids how to feel, what to think. And then we go, why don't they trust themselves? Why don't they? Why aren't they self-regulated? Why aren't they self-aware? Yeah. Because since three, we've said you're not hungry. You're not thirsty. Or you're not. You don't want that toy, and you're not a girl. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As an adult, as an adult, before I transitioned, I remember going to like concerts and the person on stage saying, "Okay, ladies, you sing this thing and you sing yeah. that." And it was horrifying. It was like I used to just sit there and I I did not participate. Mm -hmm. I didn't because I just it was. It was always a struggle. Again, when you're allowed to walk your truth and you're recognized and you're affirmed for who you are, you can't expect a child to give 100% of who they are if they can't be 100% of who they are. You're you're setting them up for failure, period. That quote period. we gotta grab, Crystal. I know, I know, I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> okay, good, so say it again slowly. Say it again, say it again. Okay. Okay. You can't expect a child to give 100% if they can't be 100% of who they are. That's their crazy. their minds are their minds are not in, in their schoolwork. My I I barely made it out of high school because I was surviving and I, I my when they were like do homework do homework, yeah I wasn't even engaged in that. So that's really really important. You're 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 setting them up for failure if you don't honor who they are. Yeah, you know? we're getting really lovely comments about so someone saying I'm learning so much about this and working on my own implicit bias. My awesome. child, my kid is teaching me so much. That's awesome, Kim. Thank you. Um, and so folks that are that are listening, we're so glad you're here. And this will be on replay too. So Tony, lots of people will join us live today and then people okay. but watching it later. So we wanted to make sure that you kind of taught us some things. Um, so Tony's here because he's speaking at the Summer Leadership Institute. So he's gonna do a full hour yep. all about yeah, all about how to create inclusive schools around kids that are non-binary and trans kids. Um, it's August third through sixth, it's virtual this year and it's gonna be amazing. Um, and so we're really excited to have you at that conference. I'm excited. I'm really, I'm really excited about it. Just finished the presentation yesterday. So oh. stay tuned. See, he's ready, ready, Julie. He's ready. That's okay. We, we got, I don't know how to do that. We got to get ready. <laughs> you know, like I'm a procrastinator, so I'm told. Wow. Yeah, I know. Teach me that skill. Um, right, so which, which thing you want to do next, Julie? So I set it up right. I wanted to, I, so I've got a lot of things. One thing I yeah. want to talk about is your film. And so yeah. we can do that kind of quickly because I think that if you're watching this and you have Netflix, you need to watch A Self-Made Man. It's also it's also on Amazon Prime. I don't know. I don't think it's on Netflix. It's on Amazon Prime. Oh, Amazon Prime. That's where I watched it. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Amazon Prime. Um, yeah. And it's really your story. You get you get a deep dive into your life. You can just tell people. What You'll know more about me than you'll I'll ever know about you. How's that? But um, this is this was pretty cool. They followed me around for a year, and the film is only fifty eight minutes long. So, uh, the way Lori Petras, who was the filmmaker, and her crew, th through my my struggles in my life, like I don't look back on my journey and hold any like regret. All right, even though I was hospitalized for suicide. I was sexually abused, verbally abused, thrown out of my home. I was homeless at one time. Wow, what a journey. But I, that journey created who I am today. And that journey allows me to give the gift of hope, hopefulness to the children I work with. So when you, if you watch the film, my struggles and she like interwines. You remember how she was like my, I talk about my chest surgery and then there's kids talking about, oh my God, I'm getting my chest surgery or I got my chest surgery. Yeah. So Lori Petras did a phenomenal job. It's award winning. It won awards all over the world in film festivals. And here's the deal. I'm, I might get a little emotional. I never thought that my journey, which was so hard and so sad and horrific at some points would actually save people's lives because that's what people tell me. And it's just, it's total full circle. So when, if you told me 20 years ago, hey, listen, you're gonna be this trans guy and you're gonna be a professional trans man and you're gonna have a movie and you're gonna have a TV show and you're gonna have books out, I would have told you you were nuts. Um, but here I am. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't surprise me at all to hear that it's saving lives because when I watch that, I want every educator on earth to watch what kids today, so what's beautiful is it's your story, plus all the kids that you support yeah. and work with, 
And you get to hear from their mouths what's stressing them out, what they're thinking about, dating, all the things that were, that all the social pressures that are uh, common for teenagers, and now sort of layer on top of that gender identity and what that's like. And um, their parents too. Their parents are have voice in this film, and it was the first film about a trans person that was uplifting and inspiring. Yeah. You know, it, it's just like you know, listen, you know, believe in who you are. And, and try to walk your truth and hopefully people will support you, you know, and that's what's hard about um, kids, especially younger kids, is that they don't have the choice to leave their home, right? And when this pandemic first started, the, I, I don't know if you felt the same way, but the first first people I thought of were the LGBTQ youth that aren't accepted mm -hmm. and they have were stuck in their yeah. homes, you know, so uh, kind of a big deal. A pretty big deal and is a really big deal right now. Our goal today is to help people realize that in school settings, educators in all kinds of ways are communicating uh, value or not value to kids by the language they use, by the way they talk, by their actions that they, their nonverbals, all of it. We've got to really, really rethink the way that schools are set up and the ways that we talk as educators. Absolutely. Yeah. And I wanted to go back, speaking of full circle a little bit, um, we talk a lot about creating safe harbors. So Tony, you said a couple of really important things before we got on the air and while we've been on about families and about how your work is with the wholeness of the family. Yeah. So maybe just speak a little bit too, because I think too often educators think, I got to do this, I got to do all this and what are parents going to say? So just yeah. speak to a little bit about how we come together. And if you if you join me in my presentation on the fourth, I actually have I talk about when when families aren't accepting what the best practice is. But listen, parents don't sign up for this. Um, is, is it getting better? I've been doing this work for so long. Yeah, I, before people parents would call me up and say, "Oh my God, what does this mean?" Like now they're saying, "Okay, my kid just said they were trans. I need to wrap my head around this." And they always think, and, and I can see why, they always think that their kid will not be successful, that they'll um, not, and the first thing they ask everyone, now hear me, the first thing, every call I've gotten since 2007, what are we gonna do about school, Tony? What are we gonna do about school? That's their first question, because they fear that their kid is not gonna be accepted, they're not gonna be able to use the bathroom, they're gonna get bullied, uh, teachers might bully, because listen, kids don't only get bullied by classmates, all right? They get bullied by educators and, and supporting staff and everybody. So the first question a parent always asks is, what do we do about school? So I say, did I train the school? Because if I trained the school, you're fine, right? Because I don't think anybody, the majority of the time, people aren't doing things deliberately. They're doing things because they don't know any better. Because if I can rename every one of my presentations, it would be, be kind. Because if we stop and we really think about what we're saying to people, and, and listen, let's even talk about everybody in our lives, professional lives and personal lives. Sometimes we say things that we don't really mean um, because we're not thinking, we're not present. Yeah. So be kind. Uh, don't be the first person who bullies your kids. As you said yeah. that earlier, and that I did. Yeah. Part yeah. of that too. Yeah. yeah. It's it's so important because here's the reality of it. If your child comes out at five and says, "I'm a I'm a girl." And you say, okay, what do you need? Um, they're going to guide you to what they need, right? Now, let's just say they said three, four years later, oops, which by the way, never happened in my, 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 all the years that I've been doing it, but just say they do say, oh, actually, I'm really a boy. Mm -hmm. You're going to love them anyway. So, you know, and I always challenge um, moms who are, who, who have had that child because some moms are, you know, adopt their children. But when you were carrying your child and somebody asked what the sex was of your baby, what did you say? Oh, it didn't matter as long as it's healthy. Well, what, why has it changed? You know, why has it changed? So I question them and sometimes it's with kindness and sometimes I can't candy coat. Um, I've had parents who didn't accept their child until the kid tried to hang himself in his bedroom. And then after he almost killed themselves, then they were on board. We don't want to wait that long. So speaking of that really heavy topic of suicide, and that's something that you don't really shy away from because the statistics don't allow us to shy away from that. Um, we know that trans kids are really likely to attempt and consider suicide, probably twice as likely as anyone else. Now, um, the other piece that I want to make sure everybody knows about is your book, and I've got it right here. I actually love it. Um, so thank you for giving it to me when we were together. Oh, no problem. Yeah, it's filled with, uh, pictures that kids have created 
that um, are non-binary students talking or kids talking about what it's like. Yeah. So, so the, there's two volumes. This one is volume one. The two questions I asked the children is what does body dysphoria feel like? And if had all the money in the world, what would you buy first? Trans and non-binary kids drew the, a picture and they wrote down what their picture meant. So you're hearing it from them. I'm just the vehicle. Volume two is what makes you sad, which is awful. Um, and uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. So there's always a soft, there's always a hard one then kind of a soft one. Um, these books are now available on my website, but they're also available on Kindle. I just started them on Kindle. So if you visit my website, uh, tonyferro.com, and I think they're going to put it up later, uh, go and check it out. I but think that picture, yeah, go ahead. To me, and Christy, you can put up that picture. I think Edgar is a student. To me, I love to look at the book for two reasons. I love to first look at the picture and see what I see because sometimes it's even more um powerful than the words. And then sometimes the words are more powerful than the picture. Yes. So do you mind reading Edgar's? Just no, not at all. This is, this is a real, to me, it's very powerful. And I just, I just co-authored a chapter in a Springer uh, pediatric um, welcoming your trans and non-binary student. And I did the terminology and welcoming and they used this picture. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. So this was a question was, what does body dysphoria feel like? Edgar 14. Body dysphoria to me feels like being locked in a cage as cliche as that may sound. Sometimes I feel superior, but my human form is keeping me down. There are lots of things I'll never be able to do to experience because of my body. Even worse, people think that my human form has to define me. I drew weapons around my cage because I feel like I'm being tortured for having any confidence and my body is my punishment. If you, if after hearing that and seeing this, and if you join me in my training, you'll also get a sneak peek of volume three. And the question is, what does it feel like to be misgendered? And what these children drew are knives in their bodies. If you, after that, don't honor a child's name and pronoun, I want you to call me up personally and I'll coach you. <laughs> I'll give you one more, one more chance. Right. Um, but it's, it's, it's important. It's critical. They wouldn't call it their dead name if their birth name, their dead name, if it wasn't important. And Edgar's not being dramatic. Edgar's not trying to get attention. This is exactly how this poor guy feels because he can't handle his body. Yeah. And for okay. all of you out there, sorry, for all of you out there in, I don't know what site we're on. It's not Zoom. Oh, be live. Yeah. yeah. Land. We're on Facebook. Um, oh, we're on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Facebook. So everybody in Facebook land, if you don't identify as trans or non-binary, I'm going to congratulate you that you're retired from trying to figure out and understand what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I And sometimes when we try to understand what it feels like to be trans and we can't, it blocks, them from, blocks us from accepting it. I don't know what it feels like not to be trans. I don't know what it feels like to be a cisgender person who was born in a body that matches my identity, but I, I honor and I respect everybody anyway, even though trans community is much cooler than the cisgender. Sorry, it's true. Whatever. Maybe, I mean, maybe is what I want to say, but let me ask this. I think this might be a very naive question. So the word dead name, right? So you'll say that someone will say my dead name, my old name, the name I was before I was. Birth name, yeah. Yeah, birth name. And so is dead name a really like, is that a, is that an okay question to ask someone or not? Like, no, it's not. You don't, you don't ask somebody uh, what their birth name was because what does it matter? You know, and very early on, I, I was asked two things when I used to get up and when we showed in the film and I would be showing it in front of like 2000 people and I'd get two questions all the time. First question, what was your name before you transitioned? Hmm. And I don't disclose it. Why? The only reason why you want to know is because you're looking at me saying, how the hell could that have been a check? I got to put some kind of, I got to put some kind of female thing around uh, this person for me to really for grasp this is a trans guy, right? Yeah, for my comfort, absolutely. Yeah, for, for their comfort. And then the second one was, you know, about my genitalia, you know. So that's for my curiosity. Yeah, yeah. And I have, I have a can to answer for that. And, and the first time I had to answer it, I was in front of 2,400 people at a university and the first question was about my genitalia. So I stepped a little bit closer to the end of the stage. And I said to this person, you're going to sleep with me tonight. And they were like, what, what? And I said, you're going to sleep with me tonight. And they were like, no, I said, then it's none of your business. Next question. But it's inappropriate to ask anyone 
about their genitalia, but people think they have the right to ask a trans person. Mm -hmm. And and if you join me again on the fourth, I'm gonna go through the gender bred person um, uh, diagram and I'm gonna teach everyone that everything is separate. Okay, and we can go through that. I'm not, that's all I'm gonna tease about that one. Okay, because it's really good. In fact, the gender bred uh, piece itself was what made me think you have to come to the Summer Leadership Institute because we have very, very skilled educators and administrators who are very, very knowledgeable. And for some, this will be really, oh yeah, new and really, really um, fabulous. It's so, brilliant the way they did it, brilliant. Yeah, I love it. Um, and I can't wait to see it because every preschool teacher, educator in the world, does stuff around the gingerbread man person versions, you know, all of them. So this is going to be like, Phew. there's also a gender unicorn though. Just saying, I like the, I like the gingerbread, per, the gingerbread person better. Anyway. Okay. That's okay. great. Okay. Uh, I know this, this is the fun of the three of us together. Is <laughs> we um, forgot you're with us. Sorry. Yeah, right. Um, and <laughs> it's okay, Julie, I do it all the time. Speaking of that, we're getting really lovely comments, like Crucial Point, and that was about the dead name, and so thank you for sharing that with me. And um, a lot of people are saying things like, we are our journey, and that they were thanking you for sharing how your journey is impacting kids today. Where do kids go? If they're on Facebook, or if you're a parent, and they really want their kid or, or the student themselves, although the reason I keep saying that is because we know that teens aren't on Facebook, but let's imagine they were. Yeah. Um, how, how would they find you if they wanted support in a support group? Sure. So if you go to my website, uh, www.tonyferriolo.com, there's a contact page and you have your choice. You're going to contact me for a keynote, for training, for a support group. Um, now that now that we are Zooming our support groups and we didn't miss one meeting, um, I, I can actually invite people in from other states. Not sure how that's going to work. I, I, I believe when we can do face-to-face -face again, which will probably won't be, I'm, I'm clocking it a year and a half, two years, actually, to get us, because our spaces are classrooms and you can't fit 25 people in a classroom at six feet apart, um, that I'll probably continue a Zoom um, parent group and kid group separately from the local one. So Carrie, I'm just sharing someone's, they wrote a, they made a red mad face and they said, my child had the principal at his school ask what parts he had down there. <sighs> Can you imagine? What school? I'm going there right now. Yeah. I will go there right now. We will, we will take on the virus. We, for need, that one. we need to train that that school district now. I'm sorry that happened. It's and how old? May, may I ask how old the, the child was? Yeah, that's so that it matters. Carrie, if you feel like putting the age of your child, that'd be great. If not, that's okay. Um, oh my God, that's like, and I'm not. You know, I'm 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 reacting to it, but unfortunately, I'm not surprised that they 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 think it's okay. It's not okay, and that's kind of weird, man, on so many different levels. Yeah, and maybe maybe one more thing. I know we're kind of been a while, but um, Tony, you were talking about the pause, and maybe this is a good opportunity for yeah. a, that lesson. So part of the training also will be talking about, very briefly and breezy, the power of the pause, I like to call it, the space between stimula stimulation and reaction that we all have, okay? But typically, we don't use it, all right? You want to make sure that your words go through three gates. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? We all know what truth is and we all know what kindness is, but I want to talk about the necessary part because it's not, is it necessary for you to say it? It's, is it necessary for the other person to hear it? Is it going to bring them uh, any kind of comfort? Is it going to give them any, any positive um, feelings? If you're just trying to get something off your chest or you're asking a curiosity question like that principal did, don't say it. You want to know about trans bodies, Google it. So mm -hmm. ask an adult, talk mm -hmm. to somebody else, but definitely I don't care how old the student is. If it's a student, don't ask them. Mm -hmm. Don't ask them. Contact me. I'll, I'll, I'll school you. Okay, good. So we're so glad you're joining us. I mean, it's just going to be a very power packed hour. Um, Carrie has jotted down 12 years old was the student that, that we were referring to. Heartbreaking. Sorry. Yeah. And so, um, and she's also adding this, which I, I find very common. She said they didn't know what to do because they, because he was so young. And mm. that's what I'm finding is teachers are like, what are we going to do? The student's a first grader. And it's like, I don't understand the question because yeah, do I like, what do you mean you're going to do? What are you going to do? I think it goes back to what you said that what if they change their mind? That's the, that's what people are thinking. 
Well, they're thinking that it's a phase. They're thinking that they don't know right. because they're too young. They, what people don't understand, that cisgender, non-trans people don't understand, is that you knew when you were that young. Yeah. You know, and I, I always reverse it. How did you knew, know that you were a girl? How did you know that you were a boy? Well, I just knew. Yeah. The reason why you just knew and I didn't just know is because it was it was a disconnect for me. People were calling me a girl, but I didn't feel like it. There was something wrong inside until for me, because I'm such an old guy, there was no language around transgender, even mm -hmm. when I was growing up. So for me, people were telling me I was female and I was attracted to females. So I was a lesbian forever. Mm -hmm. Party promoter, by the way. Anyway, now I'm a straight guy. Now I'm a straight Wait, guy. When you said party promoter, by the way, you meant you were a party promoter, that, and so you were in the lesbian scene. What did you oh, mean? Oh, yeah. I used to throw lesbian dance parties all the time, 300, 400 women. Watch out. You know, but here yeah. is the reality. When I transitioned, most of that community turned their backs on me back then. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were mean. They were mean. Like I would go into a bar and they'd be like, what are you doing here? Um, this You're a guy now, but all my friends are lesbians. I'd say it again. all my friends are lesbians, but it's changed now. It's changed, yeah. which I'm really grateful for that. The, there's not that big wedge between the LGB and the T anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's beginning mm -hmm. to be in, in most people's minds and still not all, right? And so we've, right. Got, we've got to get there. Okay, so we know it's been a long time. We've been talking for a long time and we're just thrilled that you're joining us and yeah, yeah. know that this is such an important conversation to have at this leadership Institute. Um, and we're thrilled you're coming. So let's just put up the, if case people want to go to the Institute, um, it's virtual this year. Tony's going to be there. We're going to be talking about inclusion in all kinds of new ways. And so it's also virtual lifetime access. So here's what you need to know is if you really love Tony's session, you, you have it, you can use it, right? You can think about it. You can share it with your family. You can share it with your own kids at home, stuff like that. This is going to be kind of a groundbreaking um, presentation that we're just really happy to have you. So thank you. I'm excited. Me too. Okay. And if you want to get a hold of Tony in any other way, um, Christy will put up his website one more time. And our our hope is that you hear this and you join us at the Summer Leadership Institute at the very least. And if not, join Tony anywhere. So go to his website and figure out how you can get him to coach you or how to get him to come to your school. We're getting Facebook notifications right now all, all over the place. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> yes, so contact me. I'm always, I, 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 I do travel, kind of, sort of. Going to New Hampshire this weekend, seeing my brother. He oh. lives in Keene, so. Okay. Watch out, New Hampshire. Here I come. That's okay. We, we don't mind zooming with you at all. We <laughs> love this. So thank you. Thank you for um, allowing it. And thank you for also um, reiterating how important it is that we start young. Because as we talked about, so many of the, the conversations need to start with families. And they need to start so early. And then that's when it's like the clunkiest. And then if we wait too long, then we know where we end up. Yeah, and don't reinvent the wheel. If your school's faced with a young kid transitioning, reach out. There's letters that you can send to parents. You don't have to, there's so many schools, especially in Connecticut, that are always willing to help other school districts. Um, and I also have some letters that you can send out. So if it gets to the point where it's, you're like, oh my God, don't freak out, reach out. <laughs> oh, that's a good one too. I didn't know that one already. And if you're not sure what to do, be kind. Start there and there. Yes, there you go. That's bing, it. bing. So yeah. if someone says, I've decided I'm a girl or I'm a girl or I'm a boy, that's when you say, okay, what do you need? Yeah, right? what do you need? And, <laughs> yeah. and listen, listen to them and believe them when they answer you. Yeah. Wholehearted, open-hearted, right, Isela? My friend Isela is on, so. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, everyone. We will, um, the recording will be here for you to listen back and share. And if there's any links that you need, just reach out to me and I'll make sure you get them. So thank you, thank you, Tony. Thanks, oh Tony. Oh my God, you're welcome, bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>